welcome to Expanding the Bible. I'm your host Nathaniel Morell. In this study, I want to discuss many, many tekel you farsen. Many, many tekel you farsen. What does that does that have anything to do with end time Bible prophecy of the end of the world and judgment to come? Does that play a role in prophetic time period? That's what I wanted to discuss today, and we want to see how. Does God use many, many tekel you farsen in the writing on the wall that was used in Babylon and find out the, the hidden meaning and, the, and can we get the meaning and the principles and apply it to prophetic time in the end of time that we are soon to face today. So I want to pick it up in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 5, Daniel chapter 5. And, you know, I was at church and we were, we were studying and we were looking at some things and... I decided to go, we were in the book of Daniel anyway, and I decided to just read uh, 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 Daniel 5 where King Belshazzar throws the big party. And for some reason, I don't know why, and I was just reading it, I just wanted to read it, and I stumbled across again the story of the writing on the wall when God wrote many, many Teko Eupharsin, and it stuck on me. Does What, what does many, many Teko Eupharsin mean? And... If it has a meaning, does it have any important significance, especially in Bible prophecy? And that's what we want to look at today. So let's pick it up here in Daniel chapter 5, Daniel chapter 5, verse uh, 1 through 6. Daniel chapter 5, verse 1 through 6, and then we'll go all the way down to verse 23 and 28. Daniel chapter 5, verse 1 through 6, and it says, King Belshazzar, the king... Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords, and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold, silver, brass, iron, wood, and stone. And in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one against the other. So here Belshazzar is enjoying himself. He's throwing a party to a thousand of his lords, whether they're governors, uh, senators, so forth, people from the government, his wives, his concubines, and he's having a party. There's there's alcoholic drinks. There's revelry going on. You know the 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 typical pagan uh, 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 celebration, like 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 what Israel did on Sinai. And he decides to while he's having his unholy party, he decides to say, "Hey, you remember those sacred and holy, golden, good-looking vessels that King Nebuchadnezzar took from the house of God?" and he put it inside his, his house of treasures, take them out and bring them here that we may drink from it. So he took the sacred thing of God and decided to use it for an unholy thing, and that was praising the gods of iron, wood, stone, silver, gold. Gods that see not, hear not, know not, taste not, they can't, they, 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 they don't, they, they're nothing. So, then here comes God. God realizes what's been done, and he decides to pass judgment on King Belshazzar. Judgment day is coming for King Belshazzar. The sentence is about to pass, and God writes, many, many take you farsen, and the king is stunned. He's scared. He don't know what just happened. He, he, he begs for his wizards, magicians, and wise men to come and interpret the dream, but the, to, to interpret the writing, but no one can interpret it. They don't know where, where, where is this coming from. And then someone says, hey, Daniel, Daniel can interpret. Daniel's the prophet of God. Remember in the old days of King Nebuchadnezzar, when things like this used to happen, uh, a dream used to come to Nebuchadnezzar, and no one can, can find the meaning of it? And Daniel was the only one that can do so? Get Daniel. Daniel can fix your problem. 
He's the prophet of God. So Daniel was always called upon on key situations because God was with him. And Daniel comes to King, to King Belshazzar and decides to interpret the meaning for him. But before he does so, he tells Belshazzar of all the opportunities, all the things that Belshazzar saw that he knew was from God. He says, you know the history of Babylon. You know the history of King Nebuchadnezzar. He was your father. You know that he was a once stubborn and prideful person and that he was humbled. He was humbled down and accepted that Jehovah God was the God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the God of the universe. You knew about the time when Meshach, Shadrach, and the Bendigo went inside the fiery furnace and, 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 and came out of there alive not even smelling like smoke because God was with them. You've seen the things that God has done for people. Yet, he says in verse 23, But hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they, brought, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords and thy wives and thy concubines have drank wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver, gold, brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and God and the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified? Then was the part of the hand sent to him with this writing was written, and this writing was written. So he tells King Belshazzar, he's like, God has shown you, you've seen the mighty miracle and works of God, yet thou hast lifted up thyself against God and took his sacred vessels and decided to toast them to false gods, gods that hear not, see not, they don't have they, they they don't know who you are. It's like poor people who 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 pray you, you know you know the, the these people who pray to to uh to Mary to the statue of Mary. And they're begging Mary and they're pleading with Mary. They they're pouring their hearts and and begging asking petitions to Mary and that's just a statue. She can't hear you, she can't see you, she don't know you. She's been dead for 2000 years. She, she, she doesn't know who you are. But these, these people, and it's sad to see poor souls that are doing this, and, and, they, and they give their last money, they, they do anything to try to obtain blessings, and they think praying to a statue of Mary is going to do so. That ain't going to do anything. That don't hear, that don't speak, that don't listen, that doesn't know. And Daniel is saying that God sent forth his hand with judgments to King Belshazzar and the city of Babylon. And it came as this. And verse 25, Daniel says, And this is the writing that was written. Many, many take, O you farson. And this is the interpretation of the thing. Now watch closely the interpretation that, that, that Daniel is going to give. Because we need to understand what the interpretation is in order to see if Whatever the interpretation is, does it apply to prophetic time period and, and, and Bible prophecy, especially is it relevant to the end times? So the meaning of it is, many, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balance and art fought wanting. Pyrrhus, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. So... Here Daniel starts explaining and passing judgments on King Nebuchadnezzar. He starts passing judgments on King Nebuchadnezzar and remember what he said, many God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. So many means numbered. Many means numbered. Tikal means weighed in the balance. Weighed in the balance. Judgments. Paris or Euphorson, same thing, means divided. Thy kingdom is divided. So we got numbered, we got weighed in the balance, and we got divided. Is there anywhere else in the Bible where there's a similar judgment going on to a nation, to a city, to people, and we find this very same attributes, these very same interpretations in it? And is it relevant for the end times, especially when it comes to the apocalyptic period of Revelation and so forth, the end of the world? Yes, we can. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel, chapter, chapter 5. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 5. So we go to Daniel 5, and now we're going to look to Ezekiel 5 to find, is there any 
interpretation in terms of in terms of Bible prophecy and judgments setting forth by God, do we find the same similar language, numbered, divided, in weighed in the balance? Let's go to Ezekiel 5, and let's read chapter 5, verse 1 through 6. And it says, God is talking to Ezekiel. God is talking to Ezekiel, and he's telling Ezekiel, And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife, Take thee a barber's razor, and cause it to pass upon thine head, and upon thy beard. Then take thee, what's that? Balances to weigh. There's weigh and balances. And then it says, and divide the hair. And thou shalt, be, and thou shalt burn, and thou shalt burn with a third part of it in the midst of the city. Then the days of, when the days of siege are fulfilled, and thou shalt take a third part and smite it about with a knife, and a third part shalt thou, and a third part shalt thou scatter in the wind, and I will draw out a sword after them. Thou shalt also take thereof few in number and bind them in thy skirts. Then take them again, and cast them into the midst of the fire, and burn them into the fire. For thereof shall a fire come forth out of the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God. So, wait a minute. So here, God is telling Ezekiel, shave your hair. Shave your beard, shave your everything in your head, shave it. And he says, take the balances and weigh it. And then he says, divide it. And then he says, take a third part and take some other in number and do this and do that with it. Why is God telling Ezekiel to do this? Is this some sort of judgment? Because remember, back in Daniel 5 with King Belshazzar, you got weighed in the balance, you're numbered, and you're what? And you're divided. That was the three judgments that God set to Babylon and King Nebuchadnezzar. And here we find the same similar thing happening to Israel. And he says, why? Thus saith the Lord God, verse 5, This is Jerusalem. I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her, and she has changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations and my, and my statutes, more than the countries that are round about her, for they have refused my judgments, my statutes, and have not walked in them. So God is passing judgments over Jerusalem. Why? Because Jerusalem has ceased to follow the ways of God. They cease to follow the laws of God. And therefore, God is bringing judgments upon that nation, upon thy city, and upon the inhabitants thereof. So it goes from city and down to the individuals. Now, why did God tell, tell uh, 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 Ezekiel to do that with his hair? The judgments with a symbolic of hair. Why did he use hair? What is hair a symbol of? And I started thinking about that. What is hair a symbol of? And I started remembering the story of Samson. Samson's strength was in his hair. And in Corinthians, Paul says, the glory of a woman is in her hair. So hair can mean strength or glory and glory. So what God is telling here to Ezekiel, shave off your hair, because hair is a symbol of strength and glory, and burn it, divide it, weigh it, do this with it and do that with it, scatter it amongst the winds, and tell Israel that this is what's going to happen. What's going to happen? God is going to cause Babylon to come and, and destroy that nation as part of the judgments of God, and they are going to take away Israel's strength and Israel's glory. God is supposed to be your strength and your light. Israel was a glorious nation before it fell into apostasy. So God is telling Israel, your strength is gone and your glory as a nation is out. Why? Because you have ceased to continue to follow the commandments of God. Same thing with Babylon when King Belshazzar made that party and used the holy thing for an unholy thing. God judgments came on Babylon and Babylon's strength 
was taken away and their glory, that once glorious city, was out. And the Medes and the Persians came and took it over. Same principle being applied here in Ezekiel chapter 5. Let's read verse 11 and 12. God says again, Wherefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, surely, because thou hast defiled my sanctuary with all thy detestable things and with all thine abominations, therefore will I diminish thee, neither will my eyes spare, neither will I have any pity, a third part of thee shall die with pestilence and with famine, and they shall be consumed in the midst of thee, and a third part shall fall by the sword round about thee, and I will scatter a third part of the winds, and I will draw a sword after them. So in these two verses here, we read a lot. First, God says he's going to bring pestilence to Israel for disobeying his laws. What is pestilence? Pestilence means disease, plagues, epidemics. Coronavirus, an epidemic. Just putting that out there. Plagues are coming. Wait a minute. Don't we read in Revelation the seven last plagues that are going to come to the earth at the end time? Could it be that that many, many take you farsen, numbered, weighed in the balance, and divided? That was the judgments to Babylon. We see here that it was also the judgments to Jerusalem for turning their backs against God and not following His commandments. Could it be the same with the world today when the judgments come and fall upon the earth because we have turned our backs against God? We've turned our backs away from doing His laws and doing His principles? Could it be the same thing? Well, let's go, let's deal more with this pestilence. And, 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 and God will scatter a third part into all the winds and draw a sword after them. What's also that meaning of that sword? Let's go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. And here we read when the disciples come to Jesus and say, and say Tell us what will be the signs of your coming. What is going to be the signs of your coming and the signs of the end of the world? Matthew 24, verse 3, it says, And he, Jesus, sat down on the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? So they're saying, hey, what, what, what sign and wonders? Is there a prophetic thing that's going to tell us the, that the end is near? And verse 7, Jesus tells his disciples, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Wait a minute. So, the, if you read the same thing in, in well, well, in verse 6, it says, And ye shall hear war, wars and rumors of wars. So, how do you make war? Wait a minute. Take up your sword and fight. So, in Ezekiel 5, when God says, and I will scatter them and the sword will chase after them. Wait a minute, wars and rumors of wars. You're going to have kingdom against kingdom and nation against nation. They will fight. Each man take on, taketh up his sword and have a war. So you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars. And it says, and, and, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So there's going to be pestilence. There's going to be plagues. There's going to be epidemics. There's going to be diseases upon the face of the earth as part of the judgments of God. Let's go back to Ezekiel chapter 5. Let's go back to Ezekiel chapter 5. Let's go back to Ezekiel chapter 5. So, 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 so when God says to Israel that he's going to bombard them with pestilences for turning away from God, it's the same thing. Jesus is telling his disciples, hey, one of the signs of the times of my coming at the end of the world, there's going to be pestilences at the end of the world. So, 
and I, I want to go forward. I want to go on with this. It says, and scatter a third part into all the winds. What do what, what, what does winds mean? Let's go to Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 25. Jeremiah, chapter 25, verse 31 and 32. Jeremiah, chapter 25, verse 31 and 32. Talking still on the judgments of God here. Still on the judgments of God. Jeremiah says, a noise shall come even to the ends of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. S Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from all from the coast of the earth. So, whirlwinds, winds, this is right here, Jeremiah is spelling calamity, spelling strife. Nation is going to go against nation. That's what Matthew 25 says. This is what Jeremiah 26 says. For nation to nation, and thus evil shall be shall come, and the sword shall fall upon. So, so here there's wars, there's there, there's earthquakes, there's plagues, there's diseases, there's epidemics, and there's strife that's going on, all represented by a whirlwind. So when God says that he's going to cast them into the winds and a sword shall come after them, there's going to be so much strife with the winds of strife blowing and nation against nation and wars and pestilences, diseases, earthquakes destroying everything. This is what God is saying is going to happen. This is what happened to Jerusalem as for turning their backs upon God, and it's going to happen in the end of the world for the people turning their backs upon God. Let's go to let's go to First Corinthians, First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter ten, First Corinthians chapter ten. Why is this important? Why is this all important? What happened to Babylon in Daniel five? What happened to Israel, the Jerusalem in Ezekiel five? Why is this important? Because in First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11 Paul says now all these things happen unto them for and samples and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come so Paul is saying hey this is written these this past historical writings in the Old Testament are written for our example for our admonition so we could know and study and be prepared and be in tune with God and warn other people about the judgments of God and, 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 and tell them not to be a part of these plagues. Listen to what God wants to offer. He wants to offer peace and salvation, heaven to everyone. These things were written for our admonition. So now let's go to Revelation chapter 15. Revelation chapter 15. Revelation chapter 15, if there was judgments upon Babylon in Daniel's time, there was judgment from God to Jerusalem in Jeremiah's time, how about in the end of the world? Revelation chapter 17, can we still find, can we still find the principle of numbered, weighed in the balance, and divided? Many, many take all you farson. Can we still find, we found it in Daniel 5 at the fall of Babylon, judgments upon Babylon. We found it in Ezekiel 5 when God pronounced judgments on Jerusalem. Can we find it here in the book of Revelation when God is pronouncing judgments upon the world, mostly on the wicked? Because the saints are going to be saved. They're going to be persecuted by the wicked. The wicked are going to be the ones that are suffering the torments of God and the seven last plagues. So, let's read about the seven last plagues in Revelation chapter 15, verse 1, and then we'll go to Revelation chapter 16. It says in Revelation 15, verse 1, John says, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. So, the wrath of God is what? The seven last plagues that are going to fall at the end of the world. Let's go to Revelation 16, verse 1, and then we'll read Revelation 16, 17 through 21. So first verse 1 of Revelation 16, it says, John says, And I heard a great voice out of the temple, saying to the seven angels, Go your ways, and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. So this is the end time. And God is telling the angels, Go pour your seven last plagues to the world. And this is 
Let's re we're not we don't have time to go through each plague. That's a different study altogether, maybe sometime soon. But I want to jump down to verse 17 through 21 when it's talking about the seventh plague. It says, And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there were and there was a great earthquake, such was not since men were upon the were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great. Remember, Jesus says one of the signs of his coming in Matthew chapter 24 will be earthquakes in diverse places. It says in verse 19, and the great city was divided into three parts. Wait a minute. There's divided into three. Number. Number three. So we got number, we got divided here. And the cities of the nation fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men great hail of heaven, every stone weighed about a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of hail, for the plague thereof was exceedingly great. So here is Again, strife, calamity is happening upon the earth. Winds of strife are blowing. And God says that, it says, And God and great Babylon came into remembrance of God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So Babylon came in remembrance of God. Now this Babylon here in Revelation, we know that Revelation is a book of many symbolism. And, and, and symbols and stuff. And that's why a lot of people don't understand the book of Revelation because they do not know what it's talking about because they can't interpret what each symbol is. The Revelation does not talk straightforward, practical. It talks in symbols. So a lot of people don't know who this Babylon is. But we're not, we don't have time to discuss it right now. But this power that is that is represented by Babylon is a power is an is an antichrist power that's going to take over the whole world you're going to have two choices either follow God or accept the mark of the beast the mark of the beast is Babylon comes from Babylon Babylon here is this power represented by Babylon revelation is going to take the whole world and the whole world the Bible says is going to wander after this beast is going and the antichrist this is where the Antichrist comes out of. And, and, and actually, I have a video on that. I'll put it in the end screen uh, talking about Babylon, Revelation 17, the woman and, uh, and the beast, uh, seeing what, uh, identifying what Babylon is. Uh, but we'll come to that again in a later time. But I'll have that video there on the end screen for you um, if you want to, uh, so desire to look at it. Uh, so. Uh, God is bringing calamities down upon the earth, upon Babylon. Babylon is going to take over the world and is going to persecute God's people. And God is bringing all these plagues upon Babylon and those people who join Babylon. Let's go to let's go to Revelation chapter 18. Jump over to Revelation chapter 18. Judgment is falling upon Babylon. And God is telling people in Revelation 18, verse 4 and 5, it says, John saying, And I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. So all this wickedness that Babylon has done, God is saying to his people that are in there, come out. If you don't, you will side with her and you will receive her plagues. The fierceness and the wrath of God. Why? Because Babylon, this power that is represented by Babylon, her sins have reached unto heaven, her cup is full. Isn't that kind of like King Belshazzar? King Belshazzar, your days are numbered. That is it. You've crossed over your line. Judgments are coming on you. So here, at the end of the world, when the seven last plagues are falling, God is telling Babylon, this power here that is represented by Babylon that takes over the whole world, this antichrist power, God is saying, you've crossed over your line. 
You've persecuted the saints of the Most High. You have dared to try to change the times and laws, as Daniel chapter 7 says. You will speak blasphemy against the, the, the name of the Most High. All these wicked things that, 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 that even um, when Paul is talking about the Antichrist, I believe in 2 Thessalonians, uh, he says... He will be uh, in, try to be in the place of God, saying that he is God and putting himself sitting down in the throne. He's going to try to sit down in the throne of God. That's all like Satan in heaven. I will ascend unto heaven. I will uh, put my throne above the throne of God. I will be like as God. So here, God is saying for the sins of Babylon, here in Revelation, this Antichrist power during the end times, Judgments are going to fall, but he gives his people a warning call to come out. Come out of this system. Come out that you receive not a that you receive not of her plagues. So the judgment is falling upon the earth through the seven last plagues. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13 and read something interesting there. Matthew chapter 13. We actually should have read this before we came to Revelation, but we'll read it now. Matthew chapter 13. Let's read verse 47 and 50. God is saying, Jesus is saying in his parable, again, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a net that was cast into the sea, and gathered of every kind, gathered fish of every kind, which, when it was full, they drew to shore, and sat down, and gathered the good into the vessels, but the bad they cast away. So shall it be in the end of the world. The angels shall go forth, and sever the wicked from amongst the just, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, where there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So God, during the end times, is going to call for a separation. Saying, come out of her, my people. Come out of Babylon, my people, that you receive not of her plagues. And Jesus is saying here that in the end times, the kingdom of heaven is going to be a, it's going to be a net. The angels are going to go and take the good people out and is going to leave the bad people, the wicked, if they don't want to repent, that's on them. The judgments are about to fall. The last warning message has been preached to the world, the three angels' message. And whoever accepted God, amen. Whoever didn't, bad for you. Because now God is going to say, it is done, and he's about to come and take his people and take them home to heaven. There's going to be a separation. There's going to be a shaking. There's going to be a division. God is going to divide the people. Those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith and testimony of Jesus or those who, have, who accept the mark of the beast. Those who accept the mark of the beast and his image will be the ones that are going to be suffering this plagues of per, this, the, the, the seven last plagues of, of pestilences and pandemics and earthquakes and hail and all that the seven last plagues bring. This tribulation that will come up upon the face of the earth as a result of do of as a result of turning their backs against away from God and not following the commandments of God, the judgments are going to fall upon the earth. So here is kind of like also it goes straight in harmony with the parable of the wheat and the tares. Let them both grow together, and then during the time of the harvest, divide them. The wheat into the barn, and the tares into the fire to burn. So we see many, many take you farsen numbered, way in the balance, and divide. There's going to be a division. God is going to divide the people of the earth. Those who accept the mark of the beast, and those who accept the mark and seal and the commandments of God. So there's going to be a division. There's divide as part of of Bible prophecy. God is going to pronounce judgment upon Babylon because God says, we read in Revelation 18, her sins have reached heaven. There's judgment. Babylon is going to be weighed in the balance and she's going to, found, she's going to be found wanting. So we already have Eupharsin and Tickle. We got Tickle weighed in the balance. Babylon, that whore of Revelation 17 is going to be weighed in the balance. That mother of harlots is going to be weighed in the balance and found wanting, and 
God is going to divide the people of the earth, those who are good and those who are bad. Let's go to Revelation, back to Revelation. Let's read Revelation 18 again. Back to Revelation 18. Revelation 18. So God, verse 4 and 5, God is saying to God is saying to those that are in Babylon, come out of her, my people, that ye receive not of her plagues. So how God is calling people out of Babylon before the plagues and judgments come. How do we come out of Babylon? How do we come out of Babylon? Well, let's go to Revelation 14. Let's go to Revelation 14. Revelation 14 and verse 6 through 7 and then verse 12. John says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth, the sea, and the fountains of waters. So, you come out of Babylon by accepting the everlasting gospel of Christ. The, 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 the gospel here in verse 12, it says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they which keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So the gospel is keeping the commandments of God. Keeping the truth that God reveals to us. Keeping the commandments of God and, and accepting the everlasting gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news that Jesus came down as the Lamb of God and was crucified, slayed for the sins of the world, that we may have a chance to repent. God says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And grace will cover us that we shall sin not. With grace, God helps us to be perfect. Through repentance, if we sin, we have an advocate with God the Father through Jesus Christ our Lord, our mediator. So Jesus is there to help us reach perfection. He is there to help us stop sinning so we could be the saints that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. It's all about repentance from sins. Babylon will be condemned and will receive the judgments of God because she repenteth not of her sins. But those that do repent are not going to receive the plagues. Those that do repent are going to be saved and they're going to be the saints that God will come to take up to heaven. So, during this prophetic apocalyptic period that Revelation is talking about, the end of the world, do we see many, many take a euphorsin? We saw it in the judgments of Babylon. We saw it in the judgments of Jerusalem. Do we see it in the judgment of the world before Christ comes? The answer is yes. So many, many, which means numbered, Revelation 18, 4 through 5. Come out of her, my people, and receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Hey, your days are numbered. Babylon's days are numbered. It's over. It's, that's it. She is done. She decided not to repent. She's going to continue to wage war upon the saints of the Most High. She's going to continue. The dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. They that keep the commandments of God and have the faith and testimony of Jesus Christ. This power, this antichrist power is going to be relentless. They are not going to stop persecuting God's people. And because of that, God says, you're already numbered. That's it. Tico. Weighed in the balance or judgment. Do we find that in application to the end times of Revelation? Well, let's go to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. Revelation 20, verse 12. John says, And I saw the dead. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. The books were open, and another book was open, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. It says in verse, in verse uh, 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 14, And the dead were cast into the lake of fire and death. This I'm sorry, verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell were delivered up 
up the dead which were in them, they which were judged every man according to their works. So here, John has seen Judgment Day. He's seen the books open. The dead are being judged according to their works. Everyone is being judged according to his or her works. Did you do good? Did you do bad? Did you live a sinful life? Did you repent from your sinful life? Did you live a holy life? Whatever we did, good or bad, God will bring it in judgment day and will receive sentencing. Whether the sentencing is going to hell or going to heaven, I pray that everyone here decides to repent and go to heaven. That's that I'm preaching also for myself too. Because this, this is for everyone upon the face of the planet. So there is Tico. Weighed in the balance. Judgment day is coming. How about you, Farson? Divided. Revelation 22, verse 11. Revelation 22, verse, verse 11. Before the seven last plagues fall, God is going to let the gospel go to all the nations of the world, and everyone's going to receive an opportunity to repent or to accept the mark of the beast. And when that happens, and when everyone has made their decision, God is going to say, it is done. He that is unjust, verse 11, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. So there is Euphorson. There is the division. The holy and the righteous, and the unholy and the unrighteous. So we find these principles in the end times. Now question, if God's going to divide the holy and the unholy, how are we made righteous and holy? Let's go to 1 John, our final text. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 24. John says, and he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. So God says, I will abide in you, and you shall abide with me if you keep my commandments. Why was Jerusalem, why did God cast judgments upon the Jerusalem and the children of Israel? Because they forsook the commandments of God. They forsook the ways of God. And the same thing for the world. If we follow God's commandments, God will dwell with us and we shall dwell with Christ. But those that follow the mark of the beast will receive the seven last plagues and will receive the wrath of God. So that is what I wanted to talk about today. Many, many take you farson. Does that have anything to do with Bible prophecy and apocalyptic period of the end of the world? Yes. With the seven last plagues? Yes. We see the principles of it here. We saw it as part of the judgments in Babylon. We saw it as part of the judgments in Jerusalem. And we see it again being played out in the judgments of the earth during the end times. That is what I wanted to share with you all today. I hope that we take this a step further and that we will come out of Babylon so we will not be part of her plagues. Let us keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. So thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please press like. Also, don't forget to subscribe. We're also on Facebook at Explaining the Bible. Until then, this is your host, Nathaniel Morrison. Have a blessed day.